Okay, so now that you've found a scholarly peer-reviewed primary source that's a clinical trial, it's time to make some value judgments about the quality of that clinical trial because not all clinical trials are the same. What you want to look for is you want to look for a clinical trial that had a large sample size. Total number of subjects that were in the study um, has to be 300 or more and the best studies have thousands. Um, so look at the sample size. Um, look as to whether the subjects were randomly assigned to the control and treatment groups. If they were not randomly assigned, um, then there's the ability um, for subjects to self-select and there may end up being underlying reasons why they self-select that explain the results um, more than the treatment. Okay, so you need to eliminate that by randomizing it. Um, the third thing that you want to look is was the study conducted using a single or double blind design? And you want one that is used a double blind if at all possible. Sometimes you will see studies where the outcome is not something that's self-reported by the, by the patient. So for example, if they go in and um, they, um, they have their blood measured, um, they can't influence that measurement. Um, and so sometimes people will um, try to get away with um, having it be single blind only, or maybe there's some reason that the physician needs to know um, which group that they belong to um, for reporting reasons. Um, but whenever possible, the best design is a double blind design. Okay. So once again, how do you know? You can see in the abstract. So here is an example. Um, of one of these vitamin E um, papers that I found and it will right up front tell you randomized double blind they used a placebo which means that they didn't just tell them don't take vitamin E they just said here's the pill and they didn't tell them what it was so they couldn't figure it out also look at the sample size they will tell you um, because they know it's important how many people were involved in the study. Um, and it's greater than 300, so that makes it a pretty good um, clinical trial. Okay, so this is what is considered a high quality trial. So what I want you to do is look at the clinical trial that you found for your particular functional um, component read the abstract and see if you can figure out if the clinical trial that you found meets all of the criteria that I just showed you for a high quality experiment. Okay, so we are just about done. Now, once you find one clinical trial that has the results, you know, that you expect, um, you are almost done. But in order for you to actually act on something, what I would like for you when you leave this class is to have a standard that I will never act on information if it's only been done once. So it's not enough to do a clinical trial. A clinical trial is what you need. But if it's going to be something that is going to, you're going to spend your money on or that you're going to have your patients spend their money on, it has to be something that you're positive was not a fluke. And so that is why you have to look for at least two clinical trials that had the same results. Okay, so I want to convince you that um, this happens all the time um, where one study comes out and it says something works and then the next one comes out and says it doesn't, etc, etc, etc. So I'm going to use my vitamin E case study. 
So the first clinical trial of vitamin E came out in 1994. And their conclusion from that study was that when they gave the patients vitamin E supplements, the patients who got the supplements had a reduced cancer of the prostate rates. So here these were people who were smokers because um, vitamin E is an antioxidant in the test tube. So they thought um, one place where there's a lot of um, antioxidative uh, activity is in the lungs. Um, and smokers who are taking in these um, oxidizing chemicals, um, free radical chemicals, through the lungs from the cigarettes are going to um, be good subjects. So they had people who um, had cancer and um, who were treated for it and then looked at um, recurrence. Okay. So um, when they went and looked at people who had cancer um, at the end of the, of the trial, um, they looked at cancer rates between the two and they just looked at all cancers and where is the cancer. So they were hoping to reduce um, that alpha tocopherol, which is vitamin E in black, would reduce the lung rates. But going from 52.4 to 51.3, is not a statistically significant decline. In fact, if they look through all of these cancers, the only one where they saw a definite decline that was statistically significant is the number of cases. There were 151 among those who didn't get vitamin E, whereas there was only 100. So that's about a 30% uh, decrease in the number of cases. So based on this, this is a clinical trial. This is why people thought that vitamin E would be um, successful in um, protecting men against prostate cancer. All right, so that was 1994, all right? And then the latest trial, which is what all of the media buzz is about, was an amazing study so many people who were involved in this. And what they did is they gave them a combination of vitamin E and selenium, vitamin E alone, or nothing. Okay. So in this figure, this just shows the people who took vitamin E alone and the people who took the placebo. And the vitamin E, people at vitamin E are the ones in the dark. Okay. And what you can see is that um, they split them up, half of them got the vitamins E after the half of them didn't, and then they checked in with them for 10 years. And after about three years, they started to see that the people who took the vitamin E actually had a higher incidence of prostate cancer than the people who didn't. So at that point, they stopped the clinical trial. They told their patients who were involved in the study, whatever you have, just stop taking it. But they kept on following them up just to see if this difference would go away Okay, once they stopped taking it. And what they saw was that as time went on, this difference widened. So there was some event that was happening here that resulted in more cancer for among people who took vitamin E. What a difference, okay? So that is, I've shown you one study at the beginning, one study, how many years later? Mm, 17 years later, big difference, okay? But the other clin 19 clinical trials in between, really. There have been 19 clinical trials on the effect of vitamin E on cancer. And what, what the conclusion is, and this comes from a meta-analysis, which is a type of review where instead of just talking about each individual article, they take the data from the studies and try to combine them. Uh, it's amazing how they do that. So it's like they're taking all the data and turn it into one big, big study. So in the meta-analysis, what they found is when they combined all the data, overall, vitamin E supplements don't lower the risk of cancer, and P 
people who took the placebo were um, lived longer and often the reason for fatality appeared to be heart attacks. And you should know that vitamin E has been, is being investigated for antioxidant activity, especially for its ability to protect against heart attacks. So um, overall, um, I think the conclusion is that you probably should not be taking vitamin E supplements, at least in those doses that they used. And the suggestion, um, given the history, is that if you're going to be getting vitamin E in your food, and the people who um, took the placebos were presumably getting some vitamin E in their foods, and they were doing fine. So um, this is one of these results that suggests it's not a good idea um, to take supplements. So this is why it's important um, that you look for at least two trials. All right, so what I want you to do um, for the quiz, um, before you take the quiz, and also before you come to class, is to first of all print out your Medline search results. Try to get it down to a number um, as, as small as possible. Um, and look through each of the studies. Just open it up. Take a look at the abstracts. Don't try and get the papers. Um, and classify each study as one of the following. Either a review article, and if you see a meta-analysis, that's what it is. An animal or a cell culture study. Um, a human correlational study, meaning either a case control or epidemiological study, or a clinical trial. Um, so come up with some sort of code. You could just do A, B, C, D if you want. Um, and then for those that are um, clinical trials, put a plus sign if the conclusions that were stated in the paper, remember it's peer reviewed so you don't have to actually, you can rely on the statement of their conclusion. So put a plus sign by those that concluded that the functional component that you looked up improved memory. Um, put a minus by those if they concluded that it was not statistically significant or that it made memory worse. Um, and put asterisks by any clinical trial that you found that fits the criteria for a quality study. Okay, and you're going to want to have that handy and bring it with you to class. Um, also, if you ha come across any clinical trials, please print out the abstract. Um, just to cut down on paper, you might want to just copy and paste the abstract itself instead of printing out um, the full page. It may be that you'll want to refer to the details of the study um, in making the decision that I'm going to give you uh, in class. It should be fun.